Hi friends, my name is Valerie Green and I own Valerie Poppy Designs right here in beautiful New Richmond, Wisconsin. And today I'm so excited to show you how to use the glacier resin on top of a piece of painted furniture. Now, this piece I'm going to show you is really cute. I picked it up on the side of the road. Can't believe anyone threw it away. Um, but that's what we're all about here, you know, rescue, restore. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of on the logo. <laughs> rescue, restore, decorate, redecorate. Um, but this is the table in question. It's beautiful. All right. We're going to make sure that we resin the top of this. All right. Because I don't know about you guys, but in my house, any table is a surface for me to set down my my mug of coffee and that mug of coffee usually has a couple of drips on it so i just really want to protect this i want to give it a beautiful glass top or glass like top and i want to add some detail to it so here are the things you're going to need for this project now to start things off we're going to lay down a stencil underneath so pick up a stencil any mesh stencil that you want I'm using this beautiful one I got from a maker's studio. It's just this really pretty like island motif that I am obsessed with. Um, so we're gonna use that and then we're gonna use some gel art ink. This one is in metallic gold. And to lay that down, we're gonna need a squeegee. All right, and now for the best part, the resin. So grab your resin. We need part A and part B. All right, so grab that, get a cup of some kind just to pour it into, and one or two stirring sticks. The second one I'll, I'll explain, but one to two is usually best. Um, and then, just for complete accuracy, if you have a kitchen scale, I highly recommend using it, all right, for this project. And I will explain this way more in depth as we get into this. So grab your materials, meet me back here, and let's get started. All right, so let's get started, friends. We are going to start by laying down this stencil. And could I just put resin over the top of this as it is and just call it a day? Absolutely. But if you guys follow me on Facebook or Instagram or you watch some of my how-to videos, you know... I'm a little extra. <laughs> so, and what I love about the resin too is it, you can add whatever you want, like underneath it or to it. You can pigment it. You can, as I'm doing right now, add some detail work underneath so it just looks absolutely stunning. Um, and that's what we're going to do here today. That's what I'm all about, you guys. Going over the top. Be an extra, you know, as the youths say. Is that is that correct? As the youths? All right. So I'm just making sure that this stencil is completely adhered. I don't want anything. We don't want spillage underneath. Because that's where you get kind of some, some funky patterns. And the stencil is not going to look as clean. All right, just, I like to just pass over this just to, like I said, make sure I have all of my air bubbles out. And I'm probably being a little bit picky, but if not now, when? <laughs> all right, so we're going to take our metallic gold. We're going to just add it to our squeegee. And if you don't have a squeegee, don't feel bad. Don't feel like you can't do this because you don't have a squeegee. Like, I've used a credit card. I mean, granted, not one that I use anymore, but <laughs> I have used, um, like, old credit cards on projects to spread it. But there's something about using a squeegee that just makes it a lot easier. And... Boy, howdy, there is something about green and gold. As much as it pains me as a Minnesota Vikings fan to say 
But there is something about green and gold that just looks beautiful. Right? I know, I live in Wisconsin, but I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan. Don't. Don't at me. <laughs> I know what I've done. <laughs> it's also unfortunate, my husband, you know, my last name is now Green. And my husband comes from a family of Packer fans, so Sundays are are difficult for us now. <laughs> All right, so I'm just spreading this gold detail over here. Um, all throughout it, I want to make sure there's no holes. Get Mr. Tiger there. And I want to go right up to the edge. That's right, folks. We are going up to the edge. We're living on the edge. <laughs> One year, guys, with stencils. Like, I love stencils. I think they just... It looks gorgeous. And I had a friend come over. And I still have a Christmas stencil up on like my family chalkboard because you know I'm I'm busy I'm lazy and I'm busy <laughs> both at the same time but he thought that that was something I bought like pre pre stencil and I said oh no no I made that myself and he's he was like oh my what um, I had one of those L Woods moments where you go <laughs> kind of like what like it's hard <laughs> Because it really isn't. It's a showstopper to add stenciling with minimal work. And friends, that is what I am about. <laughs> Maximum impact for very little effort. That is, that's it, man. That's the goal. All right, so ready for the big reveal? Let's do it. I love this. All right. One more time, just on this other spot. But look at that gorgeous detail that we've now added to the top. It's just one extra layer of fun. And who doesn't want an extra layer of fun? I certainly do. All right, now the hard part is getting it lined up. There we go. And making sure you don't get it on the rest of the piece, so pray for me. <laughs> and I'm not patting this down yet because I don't want it to I don't want it to move. I want it to just lay where it is right now. This second time gets a little bit harder because you can't really see where you've spread your ink. But we're gonna work our way through it. Yes, we are. All right, almost done with this last piece. I think one little squirt and we'll be ready to rock. Okay. Now, here we go. Did it work? Yes, it did. Oh, good. I always get a little nervous. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so... Now we're going to let this dry. We're going to let it dry completely. I like to give it a little bit of time, you know, hour or two, let it dry completely. And then we're going to come back and we're going to have some fun with, with resin. So I'm going to clean this up. I will meet you back here in a little bit and we will get cooking and having some fun with our resin. So now that we've given this stencil some time to dry, it's resin time. All right. So I've got my kitchen scale out here. I've got the cup on it, so it will default to zero when I turn it on, 
which is helpful. And I'm going to switch it over to ounces. And we are going to start with part A. And just pouring, I also, if you notice, I've got gloves on and I've taped the sides of this. I don't want resin going every which way. And I think we're just going to do like two ounces total. And so I'm going to go really carefully and I'm looking at this upside down. So bear with me, friends. All right, almost there. So I'm going to pour one ounce of part A in. There we go. And then we're going to do the same and do one ounce of part B. And the reason I'm being, some of you guys might be watching and saying, wow, wow, you're being real picky here. I know. <laughs> and I'm being real picky because if you're off on this, it can get tacky. Like, have you ever been to a place? I was at, I was out at a restaurant and they had this beautiful resin top bar, but it was really tacky. And it's because when you're pouring it, it wasn't exact. It wasn't, the ratios were off. So I try to err on the side of don't eyeball and be picky in this moment. It's better to be picky and get it done right than to shotgun it and get it the measurements off. Let's see. So I'm at one and seven eighths here, and even this would make it not great. So I'm going real slow because I just want it to be. There we go. Now we're at two ounces. All right. Now for even more fun times, we're going to stir the heck out of this. <laughs> you want to stir it for, honest to Pete, like three minutes. So I'm going to stir this. I'm going to come back and then we're going to resin it up. All right. Just finishing up this stirring. It's been about three minutes and we really want to make sure it's incorporated well. That's why we stir the heck out of it. Because you just really want to make sure part A and part B are really well incorporated. It's again one of those things that if you're off on, it's it's not going to be as great as if you took the time to really stir it. All right? So, I think this is just about done. I'm going to give it a little bit longer to stir. And I'm really glad I'm doing this with just a little bit on a small table. Um, <laughs> my husband and I are thinking of redoing our dining room table. And, you know, luckily, I know someone who can do that. Um, but he asked me, he said, Val, well, what's the, what would give us, like, the best, like, high gloss, almost looks like glass texture? I said, that would be resin. That would be resin. And that's going to be a lot more resin than just this small little two ounce pour <laughs> but i digress if you want to if you want to watch that uh give me a follow on the socials uh valerie poppy design facebook instagram i'd be happy to hang out with you guys we have fun over there all right so now for the moment i'm just we're just in my shop as you can clearly see so i'm just <laughs> gonna do that over on the cardboard. It also really helps to do this in a place where you, you don't mind some drippage. All right, so just gonna go on in and I'm gonna drizzle it on. And it looks really cloudy now, but stick with me guys. If you believe in me, we're gonna do some fun stuff together. All right. And now what we're going to do is just spread it on out. Spread it. This is where the second uh, the second stirring stick comes in handy. Because it's really nice to just spread it on out. And 
distribute it evenly. And the painter's tape also really comes in handy, because then, if you get some drippage, you are all covered. I don't want too much drippage because I'm not working with a ton of excess here. So here we go. And sometimes you can do like a really deep resin pour. You can add a lot and, you know, really play around with it with like some marbling effects. You can make it look like just glass if you want to, like we're doing today. But you can have a lot of fun with resin. Okay. This is also really nice to use a stirring stick to spread it, because you can make sure that it's even, and that it's not going to be dry, funky, or You've got all your holes covered up. You got your corners covered, all of that fun stuff. Okay. There we go. It also, the thing I love you guys about working with this resin, if I haven't convinced you yet that resin is a fun project to do is that I can do this out here in my shop without the windows open. You know, we bought this house a couple years ago and the previous owners had built it and they did it and I love them very much. We know who the previous owners are, um, but they didn't install any ductwork. So we have no no circulating air, no ventilation. And this resin is great for that project because I can be downstairs in my my indoor shop, not my my summer shop like out here. And it's not bad. There's no HVOCs, there's no I'm not worried about making my cat sick or anything like that. There we go. All right. So I think this is looking good. It will all settle as it spreads out. Like gravity will do its thing as we, as it continues to dry. But I'm really liking where this is right now. So one final thing, I'm going to take off my gloves. There we go. And one final thing we want to do, if you notice, it's kind of cloudy in certain spots. And I want to show you a really fun trick. Get a squirt bottle, like a spray bottle, fill it with rubbing alcohol. And watch this, guys. Let me make sure. There we go. Just had to get it started. Yep, that's rubbing alcohol. Okay, <laughs> had to make sure. As I spray it, it gets the bubbles. And it sort of evens it out, too. So this will bring all the bubbles kind of to the top, clear it on up, and just make it that final finishing look to it, where it's just going to be a showstopper. All right. Looks good. I'm happy with this. Are you happy with this? Good. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now we got to let this cure and dry. It takes a couple hours to set up, and I leave it 8 to 12 hours, typically like overnight, all right, uh, to really dry up and set up where I can use it. All right, so we're going to do that, and then... When this is all said and done, I'm going to show you the finished product. We're going to take the tape off, and we will have a rockin' good time. And there we have it, my friends. Look at that gloss that we have going on. 
And because we mixed it properly, it's not tacky. It's just beautiful glass-like that will add durability and shine to this beautiful product. I hope you enjoyed watching. Stay tuned. And if you feel like it, give me a follow. I'm at Valerie Poppy Design on Instagram and Facebook. See you later.